everybody, Karen Roby and Daphne LaPrance Ronge here for ZDNet. And we're talking about, uh, for those of you that may remember the Y2K bug, uh, I remember it all too well, the panic that set in uh, 20 years ago from that, Daphne. We're talking about it again, though, now as it is more relevant as we've uh, gone into 2020. So talk about, for those that don't know about what Y2K was, the concern, and why it's relevant today. Well, as you said, the Y2K bug is actually a 20-year-old bug that occurred um, as we entered the year 2000, so 20 years ago. And it was caused by fear, basically by fear that computers would stop interpreting dates correctly. So it all goes back to the way that dates are usually formatted, as we all, as we all know. Dates are usually formatted with two digits. So, for example, if I give you the number 80 in a date, um, 010180, you'd assume that was the 1st of January 1980. So it doesn't account for the century. And the fear back then, 20 years ago, was that as we entered the year 2000, so as dates started carrying 00, zero towards the end, computers will start interpreting this as the 1900s rather than the year 2000. So that might sound a bit trivial, but actually it could have had really wide ranging impacts from hospital records to mortgages to financial institutions. And luckily, developers and software engineers prepared for it, so made sure that there wasn't too much disruption. And it actually led some people to even say that the YCK bug was a myth. So it was quite, it went quite smoothly at the time, but now it has re-emerged recently that it might have been in some cases, not all thankfully, a bit of a quick fix. And that the way that developers fixed the issue at the time was to just postpone it by 20 years. So in other words, as we entered 2020, some computers started interpreting the number 20, that indicates the year 2020, as 1920. So there's been a few examples of that in New York, for example, where the parking meters completely stopped accessing credit card payments. So city agents had to go around uh, meter by meter to fix manually the 14,000 parking meters in New York. There was also a wrestling video game, which is ironically called 2K20, that started reporting crashes um, in the minutes after midnight on the 1st of January 2020. And users took to social media to, to explain that if you change the date to a day earlier, then the crash would be resolved. And then anecdotally, there have been a lot of different instances of transports being disrupted and other problems with software and programs that have led people to blame it on uh, a sort of revival 20 years later of a delayed Y2K bug um, that has even led to the name Y2020 being developed on social media. Well, and, and Daphne, you know, 20 years can go uh, like that. It certainly feels like that for me. And, you know, the engineers then knew that, that we were going to uh, get to this point. So why didn't they just fix it or offer a more permanent fix at that time? Well, at the time when, in 2000, when the Y2K bug emerged, or rather in the years before 2000, when engineers started sort of predicting that this would be an issue, there were two options really that presented themselves to institutions. The first one was, um, and as you said, that would have been a way to fix the issue forever and for good, was to convert the formats to four digit formats. So that's what the big institutions did, but it meant reprogramming and converting elements of all the programs, all the archives, all of, all of the, the whole software and the whole systems needed to be converted to four digits. And that took a lot of time and it took a lot of money. Globally, it's estimated that it um, cost between 300 and 500 billion dollars. So all the big institutions did this. The New York Stock, Stock Exchange, for example, in 1995 had already finished converting all of its data. Um, but that took seven years in total and it cost 30 million dollars just for that institution. So that first method was costly and it was very time consuming. And that's why some developers turned to a second option, which is more informally known as the pivot year. And what it means is that they chose a year, in this case, the year um, 2020, which would be the year that computers would stop considering um, the given year as from the 20th century. So basically for any number between zero and 20, the computer would consider that it was the 21st century, the year 2000s and so on. And for any number above 20, it would go back to the 20th century. And so the reason that they went for this option was that they assumed that 20 years was a long time. In, 20, in 2000, they assumed that by 2020, most code and most programs would now be replaced and so that it wouldn't be relevant that they had just sort of postponed this issue. 
And so they went for this option of sort of reprogramming rather than converting everything. And now it has emerged that actually a lot of those codes and a lot of those programs have not been replaced and that maybe it was a bit short-sighted to choose the pivot year method. Um, and as we have seen in New York with the parking meters or in the case of this wrestling game, it's all sort of coming back now as an issue that might have to be tackled more urgently. Yeah, most definitely. All right, Daphne, we certainly appreciate it. If you want to know more about the Y2020 bug, make sure you check out ZDNet. Thanks for watching.